Yesterday when I decided to start this show, I sort of did it on a whim, but it wasn't completely random. I've been reading this crazy book called Psycho-Cybernetics. Here it is. Um, and it was written by a cosmetic surgeon. That's this guy. And uh, his name is Maxwell Maltz. And it was written in like 1960-something. Let's see. Yeah, 1960, exactly. And honestly, I did not expect much from this book. Um, I didn't think I was going to get much out of it. That's been my experience with older books. Um, but I gave it a chance anyway because I think of myself as someone who will read just about anything. Um, but anyway, the book has really blown away my expectations. Um, I can't 100% recommend it because it is rife with sexism, but I am definitely going to share some of the book's concepts with you because I think they are really great and can be helpful for the vast majority of people. So anyway, yesterday when I started this show, it was partly because I didn't have anything to listen to in the morning um, that would get me like really focused and ready for the day, and partly because... I had read a chapter in this book yesterday that led me to believe I am far too inhibited of a person, um, like way too inhibited. One of the ways to become more disinhibited is to speak more and to think less. So I thought, you know, hey, if I start talking to a webcam every single day, just sort of off the cuff, whatever comes. Um, yeah, it's kind of, it can be a way of killing multiple birds with one stone. And yes, one of the birds is my own habit of being inhibited. So yesterday I told you that I am a graphic designer, but that description is kind of inadequate. I have a degree in game art and development. Um, I have a background in fine art and I am an aspiring author. Um, this is just naming a few of my varied interests, expertise, and obsessions. For a long time, I thought having a varied skill set or too many interests was holding me back, so I tried to cull the interests, do fewer things with my life. Of course, that didn't work because then I just developed new interests uh, that would replace the old ones. Um, right now, the way I think about this is that all of these varied interests are a good thing because I'm a person. If I were a robot, I would do one thing and that thing would probably be graphic design and it would probably be super boring. Um, but because I'm a human, I can do dozens of things, many if not all of which can overlap and everything I do will be that much more interesting because of it. And yes, I do think that doing this morning show will help me uh, overlap some of my many varied interests as I speak about them. Um, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. So for today's feel good moment. Okay, wait. Um, first, I have to ask you, do you think I should change the name of this segment? One of the things that I've read in Psycho Cybernetics, not sponsored, <laughs> is that your feelings are the soil in which your thoughts and ideas grow. Your feelings are the soil in which your thoughts and ideas grow. And to me, I found that really impactful and really crazy because I used to think of emotions as kind of the weather of the human brain. It was just like, random, unpredictable, you couldn't control it, you just sort of had to like cope with it, you know, like bring an umbrella, wear like a coat, you know. Um, but now that I'm looking at emotions as a soil, I've realized that you can actually cultivate your feelings to be more positive so your thoughts can be productive or, or more productive. Um, so that's what that's that's what this segment is about. I want to tell you something that will help you feel good, but not in a superficial way. I want to improve your emo emotional soil. So I don't know if feel good moment is too shallow. Um, emotional moment sounds like we're going to cry. Um, maybe, 
good vibe moment, <laughs> I'll, I will think about it, and please let me know what you think if you have an opinion. So anyway, uh, this moment today is about disinhibition. Uh, now, you might be in the habit of inhibiting your actions, meaning like what you say, how you act, things like that, because you want to be polite, or maybe you don't want to be too much and put people off. You want to have a good personality, and that is completely understandable. But the thing is, according to psychocybernetics, what we call personality is the full expression of the real self. And you can't do that, meaning you can't have a good personality if you're too inhibited. And the good thought, the really, really good thought here is that all personalities, all true expressions of the self are attractive. So all real, genuine personalities are good personalities. That may be hard to believe, but I really believe it's true. If you show people your true self, most of them will love it. Yeah, maybe not 100% of people will love it, but that's fine because the ones who don't aren't meant for you. You can't vibe with everyone. Um, but you'll vibe with no one if you don't truly express yourself to anyone. All right, now for today's learning moment, which, by the way, I'm also thinking about changing the name of, I'm thinking about changing it to mental moment, um, because learning moment, something Miss Frizzle would say, which is cool, but I'm just not sure it's the vibe I'm going for here. Um, mental moment, I guess if you're British, could kind of mean something else. I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think. Learning moment, mental moment, or something else. Anyway, so the book is called Psycho-Cybernetics because the author makes an argument that you have a machine in your brain. Um, so the title is Merging Psychology with cybernetics, which means the science of communications and automatic control system in both machines and living things. So basically, you know, you're just like merging um, psychology with computer science, just in the way you think about it. Uh, so the machine in your brain is your subconscious. And the premise of the book is that if you can improve the inputs you feed into your subconscious, you can get better outputs and therefore change your life. Um, now, the author didn't originally start out as an expert in psychology. He was originally a cosmetic surgeon, but he became interested in psychology because he started noticing the relationship between a person's physical appearance and um, their psychology, like sometimes he would change a person's physical appearance and their whole personality would change. Um, and then sometimes somebody would come to him, you know, wanting their personality to change. So they asked for like a nose job, for example, and then he gave it to them and then their personality didn't change at all and they were still miserable. Um, And yeah, it's anyway, if you're wondering whether you might be too inhibited or possibly too disinhibited, I am going to read you Maxwell Maltz's advice on some ways that you can tell if you are too inhibited or disinhibited. I don't know if you can hear my dog adjusting herself in her chair. Anyway, okay. And then she just did a big sigh. If you continually get yourself into trouble because of overconfidence, if you habitually rush in where angels fear to tread, okay, this book is old, if you habitually find yourself in hot water because of impulsive, ill-considered actions, if projects backfire on you because you always practice acting first and asking questions later, if you can never admit that you're wrong, if you are a loud talker, 
you probably have too little inhibition. You need to think more of consequences before acting. You need to stop acting like a bull in a china shop and plan your activities more carefully. And I think I haven't mentioned yet um, that the goal here is balance. You don't want to be too inhibited. You don't want to be too disinhibited. Um, you want, you know, that perfect flow of your true self to be able to come through and, you know, vibe with the true selves of others um, without, you know, drowning out the personalities of others. Um, so according to Maxwell Maltz, the great majority of people do not fall in the above category. The great majority of people are too inhibited. So if you are too inhibited, you are likely shy around strangers. You could dread new and strange situations. If you feel inadequate, worry a lot, are anxious, overly, overly concerned, if you are nervous and feel self-conscious, if you have any nervous sy symptoms such as facial tics, blinking your eyes unnecessarily, tremor, difficulty in going to sleep, if you feel ill at ease in social situations, if you hold yourself back and continually take a back seat, then these are all symptoms showing that you have too much inhibition. You are too careful in everything and you plan too much. Um, so take from that what you will. If you like being a planner, personally, I am a big planner. I, you know, kind of don't like the idea of planning too much. I need to sit with that one um, because, you know, you don't have to follow the plan. Create a plan, follow it. The best laid plans go awry. Everybody knows that. Um, but anyway, I still think that the, the book is really helpful, so I probably shouldn't be arguing with it right now. So... Um, that was our mental moment or our learning moment. And now we are moving to the last segment, which is our focus moment. Um, and in this segment, I want to focus your mind on a helpful problem or a useful idea um, that will give your brain something sort of productive to chew on as you start your morning. So... According to Maxwell Maltz, the cosmetic surgeon who wrote this book, the vast majority of people are too inhibited, so we will not be speaking about those lucky few who are either disinhibited or perfectly balanced. Instead, I will be reading you five exercises that you can do to become less inhibited so you can share your true self with the world. And if you can hear my dog moving around and sighing in the background, that is bonus. You're welcome. Okay. So exercise number one. Don't wonder in advance what you are going to say. Just open your mouth and say it. Improvise as you go along. Oh, um, another thing about this book is there are quite a few religious and biblical references. Um, Personally, I prefer to just skip over those, so I'm not going to be including those um, in my reading today. All right, so exercise number two. Don't plan. Don't think before you act. Act and correct your actions as you go along. This advice may seem radical, yet it is actually the way all servo mechanisms must work. A torpedo does not think out all its errors in advance and attempt to correct them in advance. It must first act, start moving toward the goal, then correct any errors which may occur. We cannot think first and act afterwards, said A.N. Whitehead. From the moment of birth, we are immersed in action and can only fitfully guide it by taking thought. Exercise number three, stop criticizing yourself. The inhibited person indulges in self-critical analysis continually. After each action, however simple, he or she 
says to themselves, I wonder, he, she, or they says to themselves, I wonder if I should have done that. After they have gotten up the courage to say something, they immediately say to themselves, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Maybe the other person will take it the wrong way. Stop all this tearing yourself apart. Useful and beneficial feedback works subconsciously, spontaneously, and automatically. Conscious self-criticism, self-analysis, and introspection is good and useful if undertaken perhaps once a year. Now, that last sentence really blew my mind because I got to tell you, I do that like at least once a day. I highlighted it and put a little star next to it because that's just crazy, you guys. That is really crazy. A continual momental, uh, sorry, a continual moment by moment, day by day, sort of second guessing yourself or playing Monday morning quarterback to your past actions is defeating. Watch for this self criticism. Pull yourself up short and stop it. All right, exercise number five, number four, exercise number four. Make a habit of speaking louder than usual. Inhibited people are notoriously soft spoken. Raise the volume of your voice. You don't have to shout at people and use an angry tone. Just consciously practice speaking louder than usual. Loud talk in itself is a powerful disinhibitor. Recent experiments have shown that you can exert up to 15% more strength and lift more weight if you will shout, grunt, or groan loudly as you make the lift. And that is recent as of 1960, by the way. The explanation of this is that loud shouting disinhibits and allows you to exert all your strength, including that which has been blocked off and tied up by inhibition. Yeah, my own caveat to that is to use that one um, at your own discretion, you know, maybe um, in a private place, um, drive out to the middle of a field in your car and then yell. I don't, yeah, I, I don't think that, uh, you know, talking too loudly in public spaces is a nice thing to do, but that's just my two cents there. Okay, the last exercise for today, number five. And the last exercise uh, written in the book. Let people know when you like them. The inhibited personality is afraid of expressing good feelings as bad ones. If he expresses love, he is afraid it will be judged sentimentally. If he expresses friendship, he is afraid it will be considered fawning or apple polishing. If he compliments someone, he is afraid the other will think him superficial or suspect an ulterior motive. Totally ignore all these negative feedback signals. Compliment at least three people every day. If you like what someone is doing, wearing, or saying, let them know it. Be direct. I like that, Joe. Mary, that is a very pretty hat. Jim, that proves to me that you are a swell person. So, Those are your five exercises to consider for today. Um, and yeah, I want to point out that by listening to this, you have a direct opportunity to practice number five. Let me know if you like this. Let me know if you think this is a swell video. And if you do practice, you know, going forward as a habit, becoming less inhibited, um, you know, notice how it affects you. Notice how it affects your thoughts. Notice, notice how it affects your actions. Um, and let me know how it goes. And I will do the same because I am going to be going on this disinhibition journey with you. And that being said, this ends today's show. And I hope you have a really swell day, Jim. <laughs>